All right, so welcome back. This is video number five. We're going to talk about finding vendors to piggyback on. Now, you want to ensure that your list is high quality too. And what I mean by that is you don't want to approach every single vendor out there because some vendors are actually selling very low quality products. And guess what? You're just going to get low quality subscribers. And that doesn't always mean the case, but that typically if you look at certain vendors, you'll notice that they attract a certain type of person. So you want to make sure that you attract the customer that can resonate with them, but also resonate with you. If they're the type of person that are looking for high quality material and they're willing to pay for high quality material, that's the type of person that you want on your list. But if they're building a subscriber list or customer list a fill with people who are demanding, they want to pay less, but they demand more, then you're going to end up building a list of people like that. So a lot of times we don't think about that psychology behind a building a list is it's just about building a massive list. All right. So you want to make sure not only that, but that the vendor is actually getting sales and you want to look at some analysis and do your due diligence beforehand. And you might even want to approach them say, Hey, I'm working on a product right now and was wondering if you're interested. So you can also gain interest from that and just build a relationship from that vendor. Another good way of doing it is buying the vendor's product, buying their product, and then saying, Hey, I got to, I noticed that this product is all about this. I'm actually working on a product right now that is not direct competition with you, but it's something that I feel would actually help your list. So I will say not all vendors will say yes on the spot, but if you have a relationship with them and it's not this, you know, you're begging them or anything like that, but a genuine relationship with them, they're more likely to say yes, because there is somewhat of a relationship building involved. So you want to make sure that the vendors are getting sales and high quality. And there are several sites that you can use to find these vendors. So keeping that in mind, you want to look specifically at sites that sell goods, specifically digital goods. If you are selling a digital book, a digital video course, or something digital or intangible, you could technically look at sites like amazon.com. But most of those are selling through Amazon and are physical goods. Now that doesn't mean that you can't maybe even convert your product into some sort of physical good. You could approach it that way as well, but you could use amazon.com digital like Kindle. And if you do enough research, you typically can find the author of the book or the product and do a little research on the internet to find them on the internet. And if they are building a list or selling something on the internet, that is a good indication as well. So you can technically use amazon.com indirectly to find people. You can use sites like clickbank.com to find vendors. And this is a great site to go to because clickbank.com will actually show you stats of how well the vendor's product is selling. And the great thing about this is it really encompasses many different niches, everything from wealth to religion to uh, different types of broad spectrums of niches and all that. Now there is another site called jvzoo.com, but keep in mind jvzoo.com specifically targets primarily businesses, marketers, so business to business type lists. So let's go ahead and take a look at these sites and that way you can get a better idea of how to find vendors to piggyback on. So the purpose of this exercise is to merely figure out who the vendors are, what they're doing and kind of get an idea of, are they a good vendor to approach? Now there is no guarantee whatsoever on whether the vendor will say yes, but I'm showing you as much as possible to do your due diligence and to find one. And then of course, create a high value offer that they are going to most likely be very, very interested in. So I would highly recommend the first site 
being clickbank.com as you can see here clickbank.com and if you go straight away to the affiliate marketplace we are able to see the actual vendors that are going to be categorized depending on the the niche the sub niche and all of that now if you want to scroll down and look through here that's fine uh, but we recommend that you go straight away to the advanced search or the search bar here and then of course you type in that particular vendor so in this case let's say for example that we are trying to find vendors that are going to talk about lowering in cholesterol so let's type in cholesterol here and as we can see there are 126 products out there which means there's 126 vendors that are selling a product related to lowering cholesterol now the nice thing about clickbank is it gives you some data about whether the product is selling or not so remember i said you want to find vendors that are actually selling products that actually are doing well that doesn't mean that you approach somebody who isn't doesn't have good data doesn't necessarily mean they aren't doing well but you are trying to do enough due diligence so that you pick the right vendor so as you can see we see these and these are related to the keyword that we searched but clickbank also allows you to do a search by popularity average sale initial sale and gravity now gravity is a good detection on whether a vendor is doing well or not it basically tells us that the affiliates that are promoting this vendor's product they are actually making sales so if we scroll down here, we can see that this one has 192.31. Of course, it's related to diabetes. So we need to make sure that we are looking at something that is related. But this is a good indication that the product is doing well. And some of these products have recurring, which means that the customer is not just paying a one-time fee, that they are paying it on and on and on, on a monthly on a quarterly depending on what the vendor chooses on, a, on an ongoing basis and that's typically good because that tells us that uh, their customers are loyal and they're constantly paying and that could mean that if they get on your list then you could open up maybe a monthly site so that's just something to kind of get a better idea if let's say for example your high value offer is an offer to get somebody into a monthly site so you see what I'm saying here? Uh, there are many different variables here and vendors have many indications that they are good to you know, build your list in different respects. So building your list, getting somebody to your list that's a one-time person or a monthly person. Okay, so scroll down, make sure you find somebody and let's say, let's just say diabetes and let's just go ahead and click on this person's page so we can kind of get a better idea of what they are all about so obviously in this case uh, they're talking about you know type 2 diabetes uh, how to lower your you know high blood sugar and all of that you want to scroll down and you want to watch the video and you want to make sure that it's actually aligned with what you are selling because you got to remember that they are attracting a certain type of person. So the person watching this video, in this case, I'm hoping that I'm going to buy something that is going to help me with my type 2 diabetes and all that. So once they, all, they land on the thank you page, and if what you are offering, maybe it's a recipe book or something related to lowering blood sugar, then that's going to pique the customer's interest, right? Obviously, no vendor is going to do this, but if they give you something unrelated to diabetes and they land on that, they're not going to be interested in what you're offering. In fact, they're going to look at you and they're going to look at the vendor and question if they're selling something legit. So you have to think about it from that standpoint as well. The vendor, when they look at your high value offer, they're going to think, is this going to help me? or is this not going to help me so you really have to think about it from the vendor's point of view and the buyer's point of view and we'll talk more about that later on but for now this is how you find vendors now we could take it one step further 
and we could try to see if this person might have a blog or anything else. So let's see, doctor info. So what we could do is we can see that these are the doctors obviously that are connected to this, but we could actually Google their names and try to figure out if they have a blog, are they building a list and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just do they have a viable product, but do they have, are they building a list out in the open that is not included on the sales page? Because if they are, that might be a good sign because if it converts well on the thank you page, they might be more inclined to actually promote it to their other lists. All right, you see what I'm saying here? So start with clickbank.com. Try to do some research as far as finding vendors this way by looking at gravity, by making sure the product is actually aligned with your product. So that's a good way to come to clickbank.com. Another site, of course, is amazon.com. Now, Amazon mainly sells physical products, but you still can gain a lot of insight from amazon.com. So for example, even though it's from Amazon, some of these authors actually have their own blogs, have their own products out in the open on the internet. So if they're doing well on Amazon, most likely that means they are doing well as well on the internet in the World Wide Web. So let's say for example, uh, we'll do something like um, like WordPress or actually we'll do lose weight. And let's just do some research on this. So we're looking for Kindle books. Um, I wouldn't really look specifically for physical products. So I would look under Kindle. So let's add Kindle or you can go to the Kindle department. That's fine too. But you go here, we're going to sort by customer reviews. And let me see if I can narrow it down a little bit. So for example, this person right here has about 602. That's a good amount. 541. 167. So what I recommend you do in this case is, okay, they're obviously selling a lot. If they have this many reviews, unless they're fake, and there's a good way to detect that by actually looking at the reviews. But if they have this many reviews, typically one out of 20, one out of 30, even sometimes one out of 100 people will re leave reviews. So that means they have a lot of sales. Now, the big question is, do these people actually have maybe a membership site or another site that is located not on amazon.com? So this lady is named Jenny Allen. So what I like to do is typically look at their author page and see if I can dig up a little bit more information. So this person, this lady's named Jenny Allen. I don't know if she's a celebrity. I don't know if she is an information product creator. I don't know, but we don't know until we actually take a look. So as we can see, she's got blog posts. So let's just see if we can dig a little bit further here. So that's interesting. So you can see she has a site and uh, let's see this blog. I think the question is, are these her blog posts or are these somebody else's blog posts? So they're all coming from a site called Formulated Fitness. And it looks like it's the same guy's name it's not Jenny Allen, but it is Joseph. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look through and see if they're selling another product. So this could be her business partner in this case. So basically what you're trying to do is follow the breadcrumb. So in this case, I'll do a little more research on Joseph Solidum and see what we get. Formulated fitness. So it looks like they own a site called Formulated Fitness, and that's that's correct. So Formulated Fitness, we can see Jenny Allen is on that picture. They have 18,000 likes. 
we can do go further and see if they're selling products, video courses, or anything, any other products that are not connected to Amazon. So a lot of people don't think about this, that just because somebody's selling on Amazon, typically you cannot you know, work with a vendor to with, with Amazon because Amazon's very controlled. But beyond Amazon, if you look beyond that, you can actually see that some people are selling products beyond that. So this is a good way to kind of use Amazon as an indication that somebody actually is converting. And if they're converting, then you can actually go beyond that. Does that make sense? And Hopefully that gives you an eye-opening experience into what you could potentially do because Amazon is so broad that it pretty much fills so many different niches. So obviously the third place that you can find vendors is of course a place called jvzoo.com. Now jvzoo is primarily vendors related to business. So Amazon and ClickBank pretty much fill the non-business related type areas. Now they do have some business, but JVZoo is just for business. So I want to make that note there. Now they do have some other products you might find, but for majority, it is mainly for business. Now you do need an account to do this. So you need to go to jvzoo.com, create an account and as an affiliate. And then if you go to the top and you click on affiliates, and click find products, you will be directed to this page where you'll be able to find digital products to promote. Now, obviously in this case, we're looking for vendors, but this gives us some good data to get an idea of what products are being sold, how much the conversion rate, the EPC, in other words, the earnings per click and the refund rate. So if you got a product that is doing really well, but yet they have like a 10, 25% refund rate or above, then you might want to think carefully because if you think about it, if they are getting, let's say a 25 to 30% refund rate, the type of person that lands on their product may be a type of person that refunds all the time. And you don't really want to build a list of people like that especially if they're going to buy your product, download it and then refund it. So that's something else you really, you really got to think about the type of person, which we'll talk more about later. But for now, this is a good place to go. And of course, at the top under keyword, you can do a search for a product. So let's say, for example, that we're looking for a product that's related to WordPress. And you can do a search, you can go through here and look at the products. And if you click on the product itself, it'll give you a better idea of, you know, the vendor and all of that and their history. So it gives you a good idea about that. But like I said, follow the breadcrumbs, just like Amazon. Look at the seller, which is, it says the product name by this name of the product owner. So you can scroll down and you can do some research on these authors, just like I did with Amazon and see, look at the product, make sure that this is something that is related to your product and think about the type of buyer that it would attract and whether it fits your product, whether the buyer would be high quality or not, and just find the vendors that way. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video.